So bail agents often turn to the Taylor versus Tanner as a cornerstone of the bail enforcement rules. It's a long-standing Supreme Court ruling that gave enforcement agents a lot of authority and freedom to get the job done. More and more courts are refusing to rec recognize Taylor versus Tanner. It's much better to know the laws in the state you're operating in and follow the laws. Tanner versus Taylor may not be able to protect you from prosecution or being sued in the modern bail bonding environment. So Tanner versus Taylor. In 1866, sureties made $8,000 cash bond for Edward McGuire in Connecticut after he was charged with grand larceny. While awaiting trial in Connecticut, um, McGuire returned to his home in New York. Unknown to the bondsman in Connecticut, McGuire was wanted in Maine for another felony. Upon request from the governor of Maine later in 1866, the governor of New York extradited McGuire to Maine, where he was convicted of burglary in 1867 and imprisoned for 15 years. When McGuire failed to appear for a trial in Connecticut in October 1866, the cash bond was forfeited. The Connecticut bondsmen sought, to re sought relief from the forfeiture on the grounds that they were not at fault in failing to secure McGuire's appearance, but rather that his non-appearance was as a result of his extradition to Maine. An intervening act of law under extradition clause of the U.S. Constitution. The Supreme Court, by a vote of four to three, two justices recused themselves, held that the sureties were at fault and were not protected by the extradition clause. The sureties supineness and neglect in failing to keep up with McGuire and to inform New York authorities of the pending Connecticut case caused McGuire's non-appearance. So the opinion that the justice wrote actually wasn't in favor of the the surety. It was basically a, 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 you could have done better. So the opinion says when bail is given, the principal is regarded as delivered to the custody of his sureties. Their domain is a continuance of the original imprisonment. Whenever they choose to do so, they may seize him and deliver him up in their discharge. And if that cannot be done at once, they may imprison him until it can be done. They may exercise their rights in person or by agent. They may pursue him into another state. They may arrest him on the Sabbath, and if necessary, may break and enter his house for that purpose. The seizure is not made by virtue of new process, none is needed. It's likened to the rearrest by the sheriff of an ex escaping prisoner. In six modern, it said, the bail have their principal on a string and may pull the string whenever they please and render him in their discharge. The rights of the bail in civil and criminal cases are the same. They may doubtless permit him to go beyond the limits of the state within which he is to answer, but it is unwise and imprudent to do so. And if evil ensue, they must bear the burden of the consequences and cannot cast them upon the obligee. So the Supreme Court justice wasn't saying, hey, bondsman, you have all this authority, go use it. The Supreme Court justice is saying, hey, bondsman, you could have done all this stuff, but you didn't. You let your client go out of state. You shouldn't have. It, it's, you know, unwise and imprudent to let your client go out of state. You didn't keep up with your client. You could have. You didn't, you know, maintain contact with your client. You should have. And because you didn't do your job, you can't blame us and we're not going to relieve you of liability because you didn't do your job that's what taylor versus tanner is about 